creative block is very real. It's frustrating, it's annoying, and it can happen to anyone. When we're in that zone playing with paper, so making a pocket or putting together papers in a beautiful journal, life is a joy. We feel productive, we feel efficient, and everything is so satisfying. But then you can suddenly meet that slump, that block, and it's like wading through treacle coming up with inspiration for something to do. So today I'm sharing a personal account, five top tips that I use to bust through the block. Things that I've tried over the last few years on YouTube and elsewhere that really help me get back on track and get that inspiration and energy. I'll share lots of examples of things that I do and also I'll have a little bit of a reveal. So one of the tips I have today is about your environment, be that your craft room, your craft desk or just the chair that you sit in. I recently did a bit of a a revamp of my craft room or at least half of it to give me back that buzz. So I'm going to share the horrific mess that I had, briefly show the revamp process but more importantly the, the outcome and what I got out of it, what it looked like at the end. So whether you're a beginner junk journaler or maybe you're actually pretty advanced, I, I still hope these tips are useful and helpful for you. But I also think it's nice to share a little bit of the space that I work in and maybe get to know each other a little bit better. The first thing that I do to clear a creative block is go back to basics and do something that is incredibly simple. And I typically reach for one of four projects. So I will make either a really simple pocket, maybe an envelope, I might have a go at a type of masterboard or I'll have a go at a little bit of simple glue book collage. And what I'm trying to do is go back to something that is so simple without the complexity, something I'm really comfortable with, that it eases that tension that builds up when you reach a creative block. The pocket that I make, and I've made lots on my channel, I've made them with three little spaces to tuck things in, I've made lots of collage ones. I don't go for those, I go back to real basics of just a simple single pocket made from a book page and sometimes I particularly reach for glossy book pages because I don't use them very often and it feels good when I use them up so I'm also feeling that when I make my pockets. So I will make a pocket and make another. I'll make as many as I want and as I'm making them because they're simple and they're quick a little pile builds up and I feel rather productive and good and I start to forget that I have a creative block or I'm in a slump. So I'm diverting my attention away from that negative feeling to actually doing something that feels really great. If I have a bit more time and inclination I might make a really simple envelope I may do it with a tool, a scoreboard, I may not, I don't care how pretty it is, I may or may not decorate it on the front. So making an envelope, making a pocket is all about going back to something that's really simple and satisfying and relaxing and getting it out of that funk that can build up when you feel that lack of inspiration and you're you're striving hard to get the energy back but you're sort of making things worse by focusing on it so much. If I have a bit more time I might have a go at a masterboard and the type that I have a go at in this situation is one where I layer lots of book pages to begin with with glue to make the backing and then add collage or pieces of paper on top and it's the process of tearing book pages out and gluing them together and maybe making three or four layers that is just very calming and satisfying but I'm actually getting something quite big in the process. It's simple again, it's not complex and we are flushing out that blockage and getting back to a flow that feels calmer and more in control. If I'm feeling a wee bit creative I might have a go at a page in a glue book 
and I won't go for something that's too big and I won't try to go for something that's too pretty or complicated again but I will just get going sticking things down and the combination of paper and glue and a glue book and the creative process I just feel makes a difference to clearing that creative blockage the benefit of doing a glue book page, I think, the way I do it, is I get to have a play with a few other types of materials and supply. So that would be one that I reach for when I feel like I want to just dab a bit of paint on, splatter a few black splots, uh, stick a bit of a an image on or two, get my watercolour pencils out and get in a different zone again. So all of this, my first tip, is picking something simple that takes you away from actually thinking about a creative block and just gets you to a slightly happier place. Tip number two to get you back to a creative inspired place if you reach a creative block is to anchor yourself back into a supply that really sparks joy. So do you remember when you started crafting or on the days when you have a really energetic inspired day that you have something, one or two items, that you really, really love and you get a lot of satisfaction out of playing with. And for me, certainly recently, that is something metallic. So I absolutely love playing with metallic paints. And if I want to clear a creative block, what I will do is get my gold paints out. So I've got some gold watercolour paints and I've used those in lots of different projects. I might stamp and paint, maybe on that collage in that glue book that I mentioned. Or another simple project, so I'm getting two wins here, is I might reach for my gold acrylic paints, put a few dots on the back of an acrylic block and smoosh it over crinkled Amazon packaging paper. And we get this gorgeous effect and I'm focusing on that lovely gold and the effect it has and I'm starting to pull myself away from thinking about actually being in a bit of a slump in that block. The point is that you are connecting back to something that really gave you joy, something that sparked joy on a day when you had a really great time creatively or maybe it was right at the beginning of your creative, your crafting, your junk journal journey. Something that made you abundantly happy, it felt good and you're drawing on that memory but you're having a play and you're getting going and you're having some fun. Tips numbers one and two are all about getting energy from within and my third tip is about reaching outside and getting energy from others and specifically what I like to do is reach for something I call an anchor video. So you might reach for a podcast, that would be great as well. Personally, what I do is I have a number of videos that I love to watch, re-watch, watch again, and they are ones that make me feel good and they're not how-to videos. They're not those videos that tell you how to make something. They're not technical, but I put them on and I don't know whether it's the voice of somebody or how they explain things but they make me feel so much better they make me feel happy and calm and I just find that some of that blockage seeps away so for some reason and I, I don't really know why there is a video on my channel which seems to help others so I will link that one down below but equally I sit and watch other people and I'll, I have watched over and over again an anchor video from Tina, so Shabby Dabby Doodah. And no matter how many times I watch it, it takes me out of that space of feeling stuck and I just start to smile. And it's Tina's video that she did quite recently where she shared her craft room, not the reorganising one which came out very recently, but one where she was talking about making a head. I was part of a collaboration with her and it was just, oh Tina, it was fantastic. I will link the video. If you're interested, have a look at the one that maybe I have that might help you. It's called What is a Junk Journal? That in itself seems to have helped people anchor back to something that makes them feel good and clear that 
block but my suggestion is that you don't you don't flick too often through or scroll through YouTube and superficially watch lots so stay away from that scrolling attitude that scrolling behavior where you just spend 20 seconds watching one video and then move on to the next one this is about immersing yourself in one anchor video and use it to think about all the good things that you enjoy about your junk journaling use it to reflect on everything you've done don't focus on learning anything but just have a happy time so my tip number three is finding your anchor video or videos and I hope you have fun watching just one or two. The trouble with creative block is it's self-fulfilling. You feel like you can't do it, so you can't do it. So there's the circle here that we need to break. So my fourth tip is, well, it's a little bit personal, so these may not work for you, but it's about establishing the right mindset as you approach your desk, sit down and start to craft. So one of the things I try to do is just take a little bit of self-care before I start crafting. So I do my nails, so I choose a nice colour, I love colour. I choose a nice colour and I do my nails, I put a bit of perfume on, I put a bit of lipstick on. It takes 30 seconds and personally it's just a tiny step in the day capturing those seconds to do something for ourselves. What I also do is walk to something else and I'm phrasing it that way because it's not about walking away I, I hear a lot on YouTube and from friends that say if you're in that block if you're in that creative slump walk away so my suggestion is not that you're walking away from what's sticking but positively walk to something and really take that in and what I do is I go for a walk and I take pictures so I'll take pictures of the seasons cap capture the es essence of the seasons around me. It's quite green, so I'm lucky about that. So in the autumn, what I did was I captured those moments in the hedgerows when you've got a little bit of frost, you've got the changing colours of the leaves. But wherever you are, it might be urban. Go to that space and breathe in the air. Again, I said this was a bit personal and it might not work for you but it's taking you into a different place that isn't sitting at your desk. Do you remember the days when you were revising at school or college and your head was just full and you couldn't do any more? So what you might have done then is go for a walk and it's that change of environment. I'm suggesting look at that environment and think maybe about how you could bring some of those inspiring colours and senses back into the things that you're doing at your desk. So go to something to absorb it and bring it back in, as opposed to walking away from your desk to take a moment and then thinking, oh, I've been away for five minutes, I ought to get back, I ought to get something done. And just one other trick that I play on my own mind that I thought I'd share is I sometimes if I'm really stuck, I imagine what life would be like if all of this was taken away. And sitting behind you that you can't see, that I will share soon, is a bit more of my craft room with all of those absolutely amazing papers. And I love this space so much. So if I imagined it being taken away, I have a, oh, what would life be like feeling? And I kind of feel a bit happier and more grateful and okay about the situation I'm in. So it's a bit of a trick of the mind that you might want to play just to help you get through that creative block. The fifth tip I have, which is admittedly a bigger one, is about getting your environment sorted. So whether that's a craft room, as I mentioned, whether that's your craft desk, whether it's a little seat in the corner, is it time to sort it out? Is it time to declutter a bit to tidy and clean? Is it time to get your system sorted for accessing and putting away things so that when you are crafting you haven't got those moments of friction that make life more difficult and I think take your energy away and therefore create those slumps and those blocks in the first place. And for me that specifically doesn't mean, note to self, filing books all over the floor. Do you know what I mean? 
help yourself not have those creative blocks clear them in advance by sorting your space and making it productive and happy so i've generously managed to get help from my partner here who admittedly did a lot of the work he filled in the holes he did the painting and there were quite a few layers to do but oh my word look at this i said i was going to reveal some of my horrific mess this is the mess I created when I had to dump stuff into the room next door. And this is what needs putting back. How am I going to fit it back in and where is it going to go? I put my lights and my plants back on my desk. This is absolutely my happy place. So this is the corner of my room at the moment. And I haven't yet filled all of the shelves. In fact, I'm putting different things back on the shelves. On here, the top shelf I'm strategically placing things that otherwise fill my desk so I've got specific book pages that are great for tearing up and my little tub of neutral colours that are used for collage and then along here I have Tracy labels, General Ephemera, Andrea so that's Artie Mays, I have Botanicals so there's quite a bit of Victoria Designs in there but anything else that is also Botanicals. Here I have got birds, oh it's underneath, I've got to actually pile them up a bit, I think I've got insects underneath, I've got butterflies and faces and I've got my trimmer and I've got other sorts of little bits of uh, digitals that I've cut out that I don't use as much and some of my teal colours, a little bit of Christmassy stuff and some tags and I'm going to use this shelf I think pretty much for my various bits and bobs that I need to grab so that's going to help keep it off the desk and that means the desk is going to feel so much better it's had a good clean and it's back in place and I've got my lovely plants and my nice lights I think what I need to decide is whether on this side I refill this bureau surface with paint so this had all of my Arteza paints on so I don't know if you remember but they they were a bit of a wall of paint supplies different mediums my mica paint brush pens all sorts and I also had my sewing machine just placed on here and I think although I'll have my sewing machine back I'm going to just choose what goes on there because the less I have around me I'm finding it helps me be a bit calmer so this is how it's looking at the moment I'm going to keep replacing stuff and try and make better decisions about how to use the space. Okay, so this is what it's looking like. I have had to compromise on what I put on the shelf at the top here because I felt that some of the items were too heavy and I'll show you where they've gone. So there is a bit of space at the top here. On the left I've got mica powders in some abundance which I absolutely love. So over the middle here I have my trimmer and something for weighing when I do rarely put things on Etsy. Uh, I have my backup palettes, so I've got Faber-Castell, I've got an Arteza palette and a Curitaki palette from Stationery Palette, and then I've got some of those lovely pearlescent and gold palettes. And then this area here is more about pens, as you can see. So I've got various markers, gel pens, twi markers, I've got some really nice Inconic pens from Arteza over there and some watercolour pencils. And then down here it hasn't changed. I've got the various paper items which I feel are now really easy to get at and I'm quite happy that they're not going to clutter my desk so much. So I'm very happy about that. I'm going to do my very best to keep the surface of the desk more clear. I used to have books at the back here and really some of that was because I was trying to cover up some of the red wall. Now we've got this gorgeous warm glow from the twinkly lights and it's just casting this beautiful yellow shadow onto the white wall which I absolutely love, it looks so cosy. To the right here the idea is I have my things I need to grab and maybe a few new toys to play with so I've got a few little goodies down here to play with, a notepad, I make notes as I'm working, uh, favourite washi, some extra pens in the colours that I particularly like and those pencils. I have my paint brushes as I mentioned before and my sewing machine 
my little pouch here with string in and my lovely needle which I found finally even though I bought another from Amazon and so there's my sewing machine which I love and it's still in a place where I can grab it and put it on the table I've got a little bit of equipment here so a little area of some new things so I've got a spatula to use to play with my stencils and on here, I don't know if I can open this, I've got a gorgeous set of brushes from a company called Grabby, G-R-A-B-I-E, who kindly sent me these. And I'm very excited because it's got a couple of those pancake brushes in, so I can do some splatting. Look at that lot. It's so exciting. There's the, can you see the big sort of splayed out? So I'm going to do some splatting on my scraps. And then the, the compromise I've had to make is really to put the heavy art items on this bureau because I felt they were too, really too heavy to put on a shelf above my desk. So I've gathered together those various boxes of eight large acrylic paints. So they're in one area together and I know where to get at them. I've got my metallic paints again. Oh, trying to get that open. There we go. So remember these from lots and lots of different journal spreads, making focal points. So I need those to be able to get at really easily. I haven't used these as much recently, but I do need to. So I've got my various gouache paints and watercolours. So these are tubes. So they're quite bulky, but you do get a really great range of colours. And just over here then, I have got fabric paints some more gouache paint, acrylic again, that lovely little, a lovely little palette. Oh, can't open it, can't open it. Oh, my. Try that way. There we go. Do you remember this one from ages ago? How mucky is that? It might be mucky. It's really nice colours, but it's very small, so there aren't many choices of colours in it. And then I've got the things I use an awful lot, just ready to hand, my gold, Stationery Pal, Curitaki paints, the Curitaki watercolours, lovely, lovely, and then my Arteza palette there, the regular watercolour palette and Faber Castell underneath. So I, fi I feel like I've got space. I have got more stuff I need to bring back in from the other room from when the painting was done, but it's not going to be allowed to clutter up the space here. I am making use underneath the table so maybe a word or so on that so down here i've got the big plastic bucket of papers i've squeezed in this is a whole box of vintage music paper i'll just show you that so here can you see lovely lovely vintage music paper which i do use so i stamp and paint on it i use it for junk journal pages there's a bit more in here and then the overspill of book pages and my collage paper to the left. And actually down on the right I've tucked in a couple more heavy items. So I've got some clay that I'm going to have a play with and see if I can make some sort of little motifs. Maybe stamp on them and paint them. And then I've got some more fabric paint down there. So all in all, I wonder, what do you think? What do you think of the result? Do you like it? Does it feel cosy? Have you got suggestions for how I could improve and have you enjoyed my little tour of my newly rearranged craft room? I hope you have. If you have, give me a thumbs up and we know what we're going to say. I hope to see you soon.